Wrapping up week 18, we saw one of Drew Locke's best career games so far. And now it's starting to beg the question, does Drew Locke deserve a second shot at being the Broncos franchise quarterback? So today, I want to analyze his three starts from the back half of the year this year and really analyze what he's done well, what he needs to improve on, and where he's at in his development. And answer the overall question, does Drew Locke deserve a second chance at being the Broncos franchise quarterback? So without further ado, let's dive into the film breakdown. Taking a look at this first play, I really want to highlight Drew Locke's arm talent, his arm strength, and overall his deep ball placement, his ability to drive the ball down the field. So pre-snap, we got a cover two look by the Kansas City Chiefs, and offensively, we're going to be working this go route here at the bottom of the screen. Now the snap of the ball, I really want to focus on the cornerback's leverage and the safety's leverage and how it's going to create a nice window shot deep down the field. We'll see the corner here play in perfect position here, circled in blue. He's going to be trailing underneath of the receiver, not allowing him to break back towards the ball. But the key to this is the safety that's over the top needs the bracket to take away any deep ball. But because the safety is late to get over in this picture here, it's going to create a tight window shot that Drew Locke's going to have to place a perfect ball into. He's going to have to use enough touch to get over top of the underneath offender, but he's going to have to press it into that window quick enough so that safety can't get back over the top. As out the play roll here, we're going to say it's a dime. Drew Locke places it perfectly over top of the underneath defender, doesn't allow that safety to get back over the top, and it creates a big chunk yardage play for his offense. Once again, I'll let the play roll from the top, but this is just high level arm talent and the arm strength to be able to fit in a tight windows like that deep down the field. So it's no shocker Drew Locke has a talented arm and is a super strong arm. We've known that since the start of his career. But it's just the ability to make those plays deep down the field, be able to press the ball down the field and have the confidence in his receivers to place the ball with perfect accuracy. And diving into this next play, we're just going to keep building off that. So we got a pre-snap look of a cover three look by the Chiefs. And offensively, we're going to be bluffing the screen here. So we're going to have a go route here by the top receiver. He's just going to clear off that cornerback. And inside, we're going to see this receiver. He's going to bluff a block on this corner, trying to trick him and make it think it's a screen. And we'll see at the snap of the ball that works perfectly. The corner's thinking that swing route's coming here. So he's going to jump up field, getting pulled down. And at that go route, clearing out that deep third corner, we got a nice little window shot here once again for Drew Locke to push the ball down the field. And once again, as I let the play roll here, it's another nice chunk yardage play for the offense, getting yards after the catch. Once again, this may not be the biggest, most flashy throw because it is a big window shot here, but it's just the comfortability in the pocket to press the ball down the field, fit it into these tight windows, trusting his eyes, trusting what he sees from the defense. And overall, he's looking more comfortable in the pocket and more comfortable at reading defenses. Now as I take it in this next play, once again, I want to keep on the topic of the playmaking ability, how he's pressing the ball down the field more efficiently. And more so in this category, I want to look at his playmaking ability, how he gets out of the pocket to extend plays, keep plays alive to push the ball down the field. So pre snap here, we got a cover three look with a little bit of a meg variation. So the tight end is going to be manned up on the backside. Offensively, we're working the flood mesh concept here. And at the snap of the ball, we're going to see immediate pressure in Drew Locke's face here. We see the running back gets blown up. Locke's got immediate pressure in his face, but without panicking here and forcing the ball to a check down here or forcing a ball into a tight window down the field and risking a turnover, he's going to use his legs to escape the pocket here, find a lane to keep the play alive. And now that he bought this time for his receivers, we see deep down the field, this out route's coming wide open 15 yards down the field. Locke sees this, he keeps his eyes downfield, he's going to be able to work outside of the pocket here to deliver a strike to his receiver. I'm going to let the play roll from the top one more time, but this is just a really good ability of Drew Locke to be able to get out of the pocket, use his legs to keep the play alive, and buy his receivers more time. These plays don't show up in the stat books because they're only 15, 20 yard catches, but these are big plays for the offense, picking up these chunk yardage plays, keeping the chains moving, and the ability to get outside of the pocket on the run, keeping your eyes down the field. It's a big time quality trait that franchise quarterbacks need. Now we've seen a lot to like so far for, through these first three plays, a lot of big time playmaking ability, getting outside of the pocket, pushing the ball down the field. But this next play, I want to flip gears, and I really want to start diving into some of the missed opportunities that his receivers have cost him. So pre-snap here, we got a cover one man look here by the Kansas City Chiefs. And offensively, we're working flood mesh once again. I really want to keep an eye on the top receiver here in his go route. We're going to see him give a nice stutter release here to freeze the corner and get over top of them here, getting separation. As I freeze the frame, we're going to see that he's over top of this corner. There's a wide open shot here for a possible big time touchdown play against one of your biggest rivals. And as I let the play roll here, we're going to see Drew Locke place the ball. Not perfectly, it's a little bit out there making the receiver reach out for 
court, but we freeze the frame. We see it. It's in Jerry Judy's hands right here. But as I have to play roll here, we see it go right through him. Don't get me wrong, the ball wasn't perfectly placed, but it was definitely a catchable ball, and it could have turned into a 70-yard touchdown on the stat sheet. Instead, it goes down as an incompletion. Don't get me wrong, Drew Locke could have pulled this ball back a little bit to make it easier on the receiver, but no matter what, it hit the receiver in his hands. This could have been a big-time touchdown that could have changed the game for the Broncos. Now we've seen a lot of the big time highlight throws, pushing the ball down the field, escaping out of the pocket to buy extra time for your receivers. But now I want to dive in and look at what he does on his routine throws, the quick game and how he executes it extremely efficient. Pre-stab, we'll get a cover four look by the Chiefs defense and offensively we're going to be working the snag concept here, trying to put this underneath flat defender in a bind. So at the snap of the ball here, like I said, this underneath flat defender, he's going to choose to fly out with Jerry Judy into the flats as we see circled in white. And all this is going to do is cue the receiver here circled in blue to turn around and sit his snag route here. Sit right in that vacated space. And as I have to play roll here, Drew Locke's right on rhythm, hitting his receiver as he's getting out of his break here, making a routine on-time throw to move the chains. I'll have to play roll from the top. This isn't flashy. It doesn't pop up in the stats book as a big-time play, but it's important for his offense to be able to release that ball with anticipation, throwing that ball before the receiver even breaks on his route. These are the big-time timing aspects of how to keep your offense on schedule, keep the chains moving, and make these routine throws. There's no doubt to it. Overall, Drew Locke has the physical traits of a franchise quarterback. He has that six foot four frame. He has the athleticism to get outside of the pocket. He has a massive arm to press the ball down the field. He has incredible arm talent to throw with a nice touch to get throw over top of defenders. He can do physically what you want from a franchise quarterback. But overall, the mental aspect of the game is still a developmental process for him. But in these last three weeks, I think we've seen him take a major jump in the confidence level of pressing the ball down the field. It may not show up on the stat sheet, but as we saw today, some key drops from his receivers have cost him big-time plays, 70-yard touchdowns, whatever you have it. I'm not saying it's all on the receivers, but this Broncos offense has definitely been an inconsistent unit all year long, and I think it might have cost Drew Locke in the stat book, and it may be causing people to jump to conclusions too quick. I think physically, Drew Locke has all the attributes of a franchise quarterback, and he's shown improvements in the mental aspect of the game. And if you think back to a guy like Josh Allen, after a second season, he had a rough start too, and people wanted to write him off, but the Bills stuck to him, and look at what they got. They got one of the best quarterbacks in the business. And if you really look at Drew Locke's career so far, he's had his first year where he started a handful of games, and then he went into his second year, which was the COVID year. No preseason, no training camp, no extra reps with his receivers, and it was kind of an odd year to develop the mental aspect of a game, especially for a young quarterback. Now we see him step in here in year three and start three games here in the back half of the year, and we see these glimpses where we could get our hopes up. So with that, I don't think it's time to write off Drew Locke. I think the ceiling could be limitless for him. I'm excited to see a new coach come in with a new scheme and kind of develop a scheme around him to develop to his strengths. I'm excited to see what the Broncos do this offseason. Let me know your guys' thoughts, though. Is Drew Locke deserving of a second shot of being the Broncos franchise quarterback? Or is it time to write him off and move on and draft a guy like Matt Corral or Kenny Pickett in the draft this year? Let me know down below. I love hearing from you guys. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.